So Japan's prime minister for a year, uh, Yoshihide Suga, quits. So let's do a reading on him. Listen, if you like the video, I hope you do like it. And uh, please do subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you very much for watching. I truly appreciate it. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. drawn to this subject for some reason, but uh, Reuters uh, is, uh, has reported that uh, Japanese Prime Minister uh, Yoshihide Suga um, is going to step down, he says, on Friday. So he's only been Prime Minister for a year. Now, he's had to have a tough time with the COVID response, and uh, I think that's what most people are saying, what's going on. But man, that's amazing, because he had a... Well, I'll just tell you about it. it, it's, a, it it's surprising. So I just know a little that I could wiki about the fellow, but he's amazing. I mean, he was, I think it was 1948 is when he was born. And um, he was born to a family of rural uh, strawberry farmers, you know. And so I think that means that they at least own the land or however that worked land. But uh, so they were strawberry farmers. So it sounds like it's, you know, a rural uh, steady thing. Uh, moved to Tokyo after graduation from, from high school. In 1973, he had uh, attended night school for a Bachelor of Laws, uh, choosing the cheapest university, and he worked in a cardboard factory um, for, uh, you know, to pay that tuition. In 1986, though, he quit the cardboard factory for work on a uh, House of Counselors election campaign. So that's in 1986. Now, in 1987, he was actually elected. He himself, okay, was actually elected uh, to the city council. And uh, I don't know how old was he, but anyway, um, he was campaigning door-to-door uh, -door on foot, which apparently was not usual, I suppose. Uh, he visited uh, 30,000 houses. He wore out six pairs of shoes, and uh, he pioneered giving speeches in front of train stations. So, so and then uh, in 1996, he was elected to the Diet of Japan in the general election. So I guess that's the main, uh, you know, the upper part. Diet, what else could it be? Uh, and then re-elected uh, in 2000, 2003, 2005, okay. And then 2005, he was appointed Senior Vice Minister for Internal Affairs and Communications. That sounds big. And then uh, 2006, he was promoted to Minister of Internal Affairs and Communications and Minister for Privatization of the Postal Services. Wow, that's interesting. And Minister for the State uh, for Decentralization Reform. Oh, my God. And uh, instrumental in Japan's hometown donation system where taxpayers get deductions by donating to local governments. Okay, I don't know how it works over there, so. Um, 2009, he, he, his kind of street corner uh, campaigning uh, got him uh, credit for keeping his seat in the general election, okay? So kind of that guerrilla campaigning, I guess. And in 2011, he was appointed to the chairman of the LDP party of the organization and chair champa campaign headquarters. I don't know why that has such a long name, but then 2012, he was appointed executive for acting secretary general of the LDP. And as a Diet member, uh, Su is it Suga? Suga. Suga built a power base known as the Ganesha Group and was called the Shadow Mayor. So, uh, 2015, Suga was criticized for encouraging Japanese women to contribute to their country by feeling like having uh, babies. And 2019, he was sent to Washington with a meeting for Pence. And I know And I know that he also met uh, with uh, Biden recently, I believe. And then 2020, following President uh, Shinzo Abe's resignation, is how he uh, became, uh, you know, he was the leading contender and he was elected to the presidency of the uh, LDP, the Liberal Democratic Party. He outlined tackling, okay, because this was just a year ago, tackling the pandemic, uh, re uh, deregulating the economy, consolidating regional banks, wow, and lowering uh, mobile phone charges. 
uh, he implemented a visa program for unskilled foreign workers. Also, uh, it, it attracted tourists, so that was all good. Uh, plus, supported the Bank of Japan um, countering uh, deflation. Uh, announcing the new imperial era, he got the nickname Uncle Rewa. I guess Rewa has to do with the new imperial era. It must be the name in, in Japanese. Giving him instant name recognition as a candidate for party leadership. So this is the Chinese tarot deck by, I don't know how to pronounce this, Wei Wulang. Perhaps you can see it there and make your own determination as to how to pronounce it. But this is by U.S. Games Systems. And uh, I've had these cards for a bit, and I've been uh, playing with them. And so I thought I'd just uh, show you uh, what we've got here. So they come in just a typical, uh, you know, little box. It's not anything to speak of, really. And um, the um, the inserts in here are, again, what you typically find with cards. And the, the deck, the uh, instruction pamphlet, is just uh, a typical little uh, instruction pamphlet with the typical uh, suggestions in one language as to how to define the cards. So, there. And, um, but the cards themselves are pretty cool. I've enjoyed using them, and they're not hard to uh, interpret. Now, this is a really neat design on the back. I don't know if you can see it, but it's got like a warrior here with their hands outstretched, and then all this going on, and another warrior upside down here. So that's the back, but then the cards themselves are really beautiful. They're good size, and uh, the art is interesting, and they're very easy to read, uh, even though they don't have the typical little uh, signals that uh, a lot of cards give you as to what this means and what that means, and you know, you know what I mean? So... There we go. So this is the uh, the Chinese tarot deck. And, you know, I like to spread them out like this for two reasons. One, if you're working with somebody, you can let them uh, kind of spread them out this way if they're not com comfortable with shuffling and you really want them to get involved with all the cards. And two, um, you know, when I was just uh, looking at uh, readers online, I always wondered, what does the rest of the deck look like besides what I got to see in just the short little presentation? So this is the Chinese tarot deck, and I like it. You know, I have to resign myself that maybe sometimes something I'm interested in uh, pulling the cards on isn't going to be interesting to anyone else. So um, this might be one of those times. But um, this fella, Shuga, what on earth? I mean, he came from strawberry farmers, okay? And then um, instantly, I mean, he went to college, made himself paid to go to college, and then instantly uh, got into local government, and he's just a politician from the ground up, Japanese. Interesting, interesting. And then works his way all the way up to uh, having been important in government for a very long time, uh, taking over when the previous prime minister um, resigned uh, for illness, I guess is what he said. So, um, yeah, and takes over the uh, prime minister uh, job uh, right uh, in the middle of a pandemic. And now he's quitting, still in the middle of a pandemic. That is something else. But, I mean, Japan has a history of going through prime ministers uh, every year, except for the last prime minister, uh, who held it for quite some time. But let's see, what will the cards tell us about this, this prime minister? Six cards. Look at that, two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And I apologize for using Chinese cards. I know the difference, but, I mean, it's the most Asian-inspired uh, thing I have. So... Don't we feel like when we see something Japanese or Chinese, we want to really feel as if we've uh, gone to another land? Okay, so, signify a card for the Shahidi Shuga. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Five of Coins is being <clears throat> left out in the cold. <clears throat> and that's just the uh, truth of it. Um, how is this fellow depicted here? I mean, because this, this card, this guy really seems happy about his situation and that's not what i would associate with this so let's keep in mind the typical meaning is being left out in the cold but uh, this particular fella is very pleased uh, with himself it does seem to be quite a, a job that he's doing to keep all this going it's almost like a circus sort of thing he's riding this wheel seems like this one is is, is rolling along he's balancing these up here he's got one around his neck he's smiling at us kind of uh, wildly so yeah it seems like it is a difficulty of some sort, at the very least. Um, so, does that signify him now or where he came from? The challenge to that is the Heavenly Master, and the five is the Hierophant. So, having risen to the very top of the of the of his government is what is the challenge to uh, being left out in the cold. 
Interesting. So I think this would does indicate his early, his uh, meager, his, um, you know, beginnings, and then he became prime minister. The basis of this whole thing, then, is the page of cups. So the page is someone who's bringing a message or an offering of uh, patience, of emotion, of um, some sort of passionate worth uh, to be presented uh, to you. And that's who the page is, on the knees. So the basis of this seems that he went into all of this uh, with good intention, being a, a page of compassion almost. I don't know, you tell me. The past of this reading, then, is the Six of Swords having moved out of Troubled Water. And uh, these Six of uh, Swords women, as a matter of fact, or Three of Swords women with Six Swords. That's very interesting. So um, certainly won't have any trouble uh, making their way. It's interesting that, interesting that they're shown as women. I would think that even uh, most cultures would feel that if these were three men, that would be an even stronger message. So what does that mean? Um, the t uh, sky of this reading, then, is the Knight of Staves. So the Knight is the, uh, he, he's usually a, a, a warrior, but he, this is a wizened man. He's the Knight of, of making these plans. And uh, this fellow does look, I mean, he's, he's really his uh, knowledge has been something that has rewarded him, and he looks very confident in whatever decision he's going to have to make, and that's, I guess, who uh, uh, this uh, Prime Minister was. And then likely out of the whole thing is the Eight of Coins is still perfecting your craft. Look at that. I mean, you've got this fellow up here. He's pulling uh, something either in or pushing it out of, uh, pushing it into or pulling it out of this uh, oven. So he's creating something here, firing something. Uh, this fella is just working on his craft right here. And so, yes, yeah, so still uh, working on his craft. And he's in his 70s. So that's very interesting. I'll go ahead and finish this off four more cards. And um, I think this is more reading for me than it was for anybody else. Um, the self of this reading, then, is the sun. So, yeah, he is the brightest. He is, I mean, it's a, he has shown, you know, that he came from meager uh, to being left out in the cold to the very highest office in the land, even if he was at a year and at a, the most com, uh, inconvenient time for the country possible. And even if he was just like our recent uh, president, um, you know, skipped, uh, you know, not, not a good guy. I don't know that that's the case, but I'm saying even if that were. Uh, the, this is in the environment of, of the Nine of Coins. So the Nine of Coins is really having had uh, everything you needed. So that's a shame that uh, it would it would uh, be burn so bright in light of uh, really having everything you needed. In the um, oops and the fears of this, then, are the Ten of Coins, which is, again, just showing you, look, happy family was completely possible here. And uh, the uh, outcome in his life, then, will be the Six of Cups, which is, um, oh, I can't remember what the Six of Cups are. The Six of Cups... I'm going to look on my cheat sheet over here because it's, my mind has just gone blank. Any other time I just, uh, oh yeah, of course it is. This is usually thinking about how things were in the past when everything was right and the family was good and things were moving the way we expected them to. So yeah, you, and you can see it, of course, if I just looked at the thing in his thought bubble, he's got four cups up here that he's remembering and he's balancing what he's dealing with now, uh, some splashes, and it's a, a careless kind of a thought-free dance. So yeah, so the likely outcome is that... Um, Things will go back to what they were for him. I think he's going to have a comfortable life. He's probably going to be out of politics, but he's 70-something years old. So there we go. Well, thank you so much if you've made it through that reading, and uh, we'll try something else uh, another day. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now.